Income tax 2023-2024. Create a tax formula worksheet using Excel part number one. Get ready and some coffee because you're supporting an entire generation with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. If you do have access to this workbook, though, there's currently three tabs down below. We've got two green tabs with an E in front of it. That's going to be our example, in essence, the end result. And then the blue tab with a P in front, that's where we're going to be doing our practice problem, building our Excel worksheet. Let's take a look at one of these example tabs to get an idea of where we will be going. In essence, constructing the income tax formula in as clean and streamlined format as possible. This allowing us a better understanding of the income tax formula conceptually and practically gives us another source that we can do data input having a double check to the data input on the tax return, which is quite useful even in practice, given the fact that normal individual income taxes don't use the double entry accounting system. So we don't have that internal control. Having an external worksheet that we can basically punch the numbers into can help us better understand what the software is doing and double check our data input into the software. All right, so we're just gonna basically create our income tax formula and, and then we'll color code it and make it a little bit fancy. And then we'll make other tabs. This will be a work in progress as we go through our practice problems so that we can, we can have tabs that will feed into each of these line items. Let's go back to the first tab, our practice tab, and let's just look at a tax software. Now, if you don't have access to the tax software, that's okay. You can look at the same form in the form uh, at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. But if you do have software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. So I'm going to look at a baseline tax return to just build our basic formula. So we have Adam Taxman, who's just trying to avoid the dang taxman. And then we're just a single filer we'll start off with, earning $100,000. we are just going to start with a nice even number for the W-2 income. Single filer will just take the standard deduction to start off with, and that gives us our taxable income, the bottom of the income statement, basically income statement, part of the tax return. And then we got the taxes and credits on the second page. Now in LACERT, they give us a nice little tax summary over here, which is basically kind of like our worksheet that we're putting together in a formula basis. So we're gonna mirror, in essence, this kind of format in Excel. All right, let's go on over to Excel. Now, what I like to do is basically format the whole thing first. So first I'm zoomed in, I hold down control. I zoomed in on the scroll wheel, currently at 295 on the zoom in. I'm gonna select the triangle up top, right click on the selected area, and we're gonna format the cells. And then I typically like to make it currency, negative numbers bracketed and red. Don't want the dollar signs because they just cloud things up. We don't really need the pennies, the decimals. So I usually remove them because we round things typically for taxes. Let's go ahead and say, okay. I'm also in the home tab up top in the font group. I'm going to make it bold. You might not need to do that yourself, but I like to be bold because my producer says that I need to be bold when I'm on camera here. Cause that's, that's how, that's how you get views on the, on the, on the, social platforms and whatnot. You gotta be bold, man. So that's as bold as we can do it. Okay, 
So then I'm going to make this the column A skinny and let's make a column A skinny and I'm, I'm also going to type up here it's going to be the tax formula let's say 2023 tax formula 2023 and then I'm going to select from A on over to D I'm not going to worry that it's hanging over the cell right now but I do want to show that it's a header I usually do that by going to the home tab font group dropping down the bucket black and then on the lettering white so that's going to show that it's a header for us i'll center it later i'll deal with that later i'm going to i'm going to put my formulas over here that's why i made this a skinny so i can put plus or minus and then i'm going to say that my my tax formula starts here we start with income now income there's a lot of sources of income w2 income interest income dividend income capital gain income schedule c income but all of those types of income we're going to feed into this line item now in our practice problem we had one kind of income we've added thus far that being the w-2 income so let's let's mirror what we would typically do if we were going to make this in excel putting another tab over here for that income line item so i'm going to hit a plus button and I'm going to say this is going to be the P, I'll say, for income. I'm going to make that tab blue, right-clicking on it, selecting. And if you don't have that blue right there, it's in the more colors, standard color wheel. I'm going to make it blue. That's the one I use. Just I've just gotten used to that. So you, you can use a different color if you want, but I like that color. So there it is. So we're going to say this. I'm just going to type in a, a generic worksheet W2 data input. I'm going to make that a header. Let's format this entire worksheet like we always do. I'm going to select the whole thing again. Right click, format the cells, currency, negative numbers bracketed in red, no dollar sign, get rid of the decimals. OK, home tab, font group, borders. All right, holding down control, scrolling in. So we're zooming into it. And then I'm going to say, let's make these two my headers. So I'm going to go home tab font group border or black and white i'll make a a little bit longer putting my cursor between the a and the b making that a bit longer so that people can type in the w2 income right so this would be job one one hundred thousand we're going to say now they might have multiple w2s if they're married they could have each worked like three jobs right so let's say one two three four five six seven eight let's just leave like that much for a w2 and then say total uh w2 income income and so so i'm just going to sum this up then i'm going to say all right then the total w2 and let's put the total on the outside equals the sum of all of this okay and then i'm this is my data input range i like to make my data input like uh blue so i'm going to right click and say let's make this format the cells and make it uh well let's do it this way home tab font group bucket blue and then home tab font group i'm going to put borders around it so now we've got that income has flown through and then i'm going to i'm just going to put my total income total income down here there's only one thing in it i'm just going to sum up what's above it that 100,000. that's all we have in it thus far but we're going to have uh, more income line items like dividend interest and so on later so this is a work in in progress the point is that i'm making a different tab that's going to pull into my parent tab over here so this income line item i'm going to say is equal to what's on this tab the total of all my income so later on, that will include possibly multiple different things on this worksheet and possibly other worksheets like a Schedule C, Schedule E, which I will put on their own worksheet and whatnot, or I'll put dividend income and whatnot possibly on this worksheet. So it might not tie exactly into the tax return system. That's in essence, if you look at the tax return, that's kind of what they're doing in that the income line item, all of this stuff is on the face of the, of the statement, which is kind of funny but they kind of put the interest on a separate tab if it's over a certain dollar amount that's going to be schedule b 
that flows in to the formula, right? And then you've got the Schedule C, which is a separate worksheet that flows in to the Schedule 1 and then to the Form 1040. So we're not going to mirror like the Schedule 1, the Schedule C to the Schedule 1. We're just going to, but we're going to make a similar format in that we'll say that the 1040 is, is the parent or, or the, the summary, and then we'll make a separate worksheet to break out the detail. And that, again, that'll be, we'll try to make it a combination between being simple for the data input, so I can double data input, and, and uh, but also complex enough that it helps us to give us that double check of the data input, right, which is a, a tricky kind of balancing act. Okay, so then we're going to say that's the income line item. The next line item is going to say, I'm going to say minus in my cells, it's going to be the adjustments to... Uh, income. And so I'll make this one a little bit larger, B a little bit larger. And then this is going to pull from a, another worksheet, which I'll say is adjustments to income, but I don't want to add that worksheet just yet. So I'm just going to put zero here because in our example problem, there were no adjustments to income. So, so I don't have anything in that line item. So as we do, we will build another worksheet and pull it in like we did with this one. But for now, I'll leave it as is. Home tab, font group, underline. That's going to give us equal to, I'm going to say equal. It's going to try to say a formula, but I'm just going to say tab so it doesn't do a formula. That's going to give us the adjusted gross income, otherwise known as AGI. I'll make column B a little bit larger. And so it's going to be here. This will be equal to the 100,000 minus the adjustments. So there we have that. And then we're going to subtract out the greater of, greater of, boom. So by the way, where are we at in our, here, we're right here. So now we have the adjusted gross income. We had the adjustments to income up top. Did I name it the same? Adjustments to income or the above the line deductions, you might call them sometimes. Schedule one deductions now. Uh, and then, and so now you have the greater of the itemized or standard deductions. Okay, so the greater of colon subtotal, either the itemized deductions. I'm going to put those two on an internal bit right here, a subcategory. That's what the colon means. It means there's going to be, I'm going to pull these inside in here and then, and then have a, a total outside, which will take the greater uh, of the two in essence. So itemized deductions or the standard deduction. And then the standard deduction, I'll put a little asterisk because it's going to be coming from a worksheet. Now the itemized deduction, let's put it, let's indent this as well, home tab, and then alignment and indent it because it's going to be one of one or the other of these two. The itemized deductions come from the schedule A. So we will create another worksheet for that. But we don't have anything in there right now. So I'm just going to put zero, we will continue to build this later. The standard deductions is going to come basically from a worksheet. Now you can get this in essence from this uh, table right here. Here are the standard deductions for single, married, head of household. So this, the, these deductions tie into the filing status. So I could put a little worksheet down here. And, and then again, you can get more or less sophisticated with this. But I'm going to put it down here on, let's put it just for now, on uh, 21. I'll put it down here and say these are the standard deductions colon. And I'm going to say if they were single or married filing separate, which is M uh, F S. It, that's the shorthand for married filing separate. Duh, duh. Then let's put that over to I Could I make this a little bit wider? Let's put it like over here. Uh, 13 eight fifty. that comes from our table. So 13,850. All right. And then this is going to be head or let's say married filing joint. And that's often abbreviated as MFJ. And that's going to be 
you could think of it as this. Hold on a second. This is not right. 13850. And then this is going to be that times 2, 27700. That helps you to kind of memorize it. If you can memorize this number, you could say, okay, then it's doubled for married. And then we can say head of household, often abbreviated HOH, is going to be in between at 20,800. So that's the 20,800. Now, if you're filing a 1040 SR, they have these added brackets down here for single, married. Uh, so if, if certain conditions are met, which we'll talk about later, but I'll try to put a little thing in here. So if they say over 65 or blind for, I'll put this up top, married filing joint and single or head of household. Then you have another 1850 and 1500 uh, per person that's over 65 if married filing joint or blind. We'll get into that basically later, but that's our little worksheet. So I'm going to put this, let's make this black and white, home tab, font group. I'll make this black, white, I'll center it. And then uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put tables around this home tab font group let's put borders around that let's make this black and white home tab font group black white there we have it so that means that that when i look at the standard deduction i'm going to change this based on the table now we can try to automate this you could say well if it's single it'll populate automatically but i kind of like the physical necessity of saying equals and then going down here and saying okay what's going on here it's the single status that helps you to determine that's helping me determine okay it's a single filer that's why it's at the 13 uh, 850 and that ties out into our worksheet here where it's the 13 850. so then so then the, the when we when we say okay well which one is it going to take between these two we want to take the the, the larger of the itemized or this one so this will be a data input in here, and this will be a formula. This is a formula we can use called max, meaning take the biggest one. That's what that formula means. Pretty basic formula, but sometimes it's hard to remember because it's not used as often. But take the max of those two. And so it takes the 13, uh, the 13,850 in this case. I should probably pull that down here and then say this is going to be uh, so, so then, and I could just say this is the greater of, let's say, just say greater of, and then I'll indent that two times, home tab, alignment, indent that two times, just so we have a subtotal, we pulled it inside, and then we pulled basically the result down here, which is taking the greater of these two. So that's going to give us then our, that's going to be equal to then... Oh man, it did a formula. Enter. <laughs> and then that's going to give us our taxable income. So taxable income, which is going to be equal to the 100,000 minus the greater of the itemized or standard deductions. So that's the 86,150, which ties into the 86,150 here. So that's the bottom of like the income statement, which we usually do our data input and are focused on with our data input side of things. The second half of the calculation is the tax. So we we'll go back on over and say, okay, let's say we're gonna take that times, in essence, I'm gonna say times with an X, uh, times the, the tax rate, let's call this the average tax rate. Now notice we don't actually multiply times an average tax rate. What we do is we, we apply those tax brackets so, but I'm, so I'm going to back into this number. I'm going to let the software now do the calculation. So I'm going to say this equals the tax before credits and other taxes. So that I'm going to let the software do that calculation. Let's look at the, the formula this time. So we're down here, uh, total credits. This is 
This is standard deduction, larger taxable income, tax before uh, credits. So that's going to be the uh, 14,266. So I'm going to say, all right, I'll let it do the calculation. 14,266. Now, once I have that, I can back into the average tax rate. So I'm going to say, okay, what's the average tax rate? Well, that's the 14,266 divided by the taxable income, making that a percent home tab number group percentified to recognize. And if I pull back on over here, that's going to give us the 16.6. Let's add a decimal so we can see it. Add a decimal home tab, 16.6, right? And then after that, we've got, I'm going to say minus other, whoop, that's not right, other credits. So now we've got basically the below the line credits. I'm just going to put a zero in here for now. We'll talk about the credits, more credits later. So we'll add more worksheets to feed into that line item later. And then we've got other, I'm not going to underline it yet, home tab, un underline, plus this should be tax before credits and other taxes, and then minus uh, other credits plus other taxes. I've kind of mixed up my capitals and non-capitals here. Other taxes, and that would be like self-employment tax. We'll talk more about that later. And then I'm gonna put an underline here and say that's going to give us equal to enter our total uh, tax. So the total tax is going to be equal to this tax, that that's uh, the, the tax that we owe, and then credits will reduce that. So credits are good because it's going to reduce the tax that we owe. And then if there are other taxes, I'm going to say plus, like self-employment tax, for example, we'd have to add that, which would be bad in this case, because now the, right? And so that's gonna be the 14, uh, 14, 266 again. And then we're gonna say minus the payments and refundable credits. So now we have credits that are those refundable ones which means your liability could go below zero and the payments that you make. So let's, let's in our example problem over here, let's, for example, say that we withheld on our taxes. Uh, we already have 12,000. So 12,000. So if I go into the first pay, second page here, there's the withholdings. So I could add another worksheet called uh, payments right so we could say okay let's go over here and say we see that in our worksheet so i'll add another one and this is going to be our do, 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 pulling that to the right our payments and credits i'm going to make that one blue right click formatting it to make it blue and then i'll select the whole thing again right click format we're going to make it currency negative numbers bracketed and red no dollar sign no decimals and then okay home tab font group board bold hold down control scroll in so i'm going to label this one up top i'm just going to give it a a, a name payments and refundable credits which is going to feed into that line item so I'm going to make A a little bit larger, and then I'll select from A to C, make that a header by going to the Home tab, Fonts group, black and white. And then I'm going to put the most basic kind of payment, which is a W-2. W-2 with withholding. And so I'm going to make that black and white, Home tab, Font group, black, white. Now we could have multiple W-2s again. So you could have a married couple, one, they could have three jobs each, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So we'll all put the total down here, total W-2 w, w two with holding. 
and say this was this was job one twelve thousand twelve thousand and I'm going to sum that up over here equals the sum of this. I'll make this my data input, selecting this area, home tab, font group. I'll make it borders, drop down on the bucket, make it blue. And so there it is. And that's going to give us our, I'll put it right down here, total uh, pay, payments and credits. And I'll just sum up the outer column. There's only one number in it right now, but we'll add more to it later. And then I go back to my first tab and I'm gonna say this is gonna feed in from this number right here. So there's our, there's our 12,000. And so then if I go back on over to my tax formula, that's gonna finally give us equal to duh, duh, the tax do or I'm going to put brackets around it refund because a negative number would be a refund it's going to be a positive number in this case so we still owe taxes now note you could also have penalties so we'll talk about you know penalties the software might try to calculate uh, later but that's the general idea so we get to here there's the 12 there's the 2308 uh, and then there's a $43 penalty so if I put the penalty of 43 of a penalty, penalty, and then say, okay, now it's at this plus that, uh, 2309. So 2309, okay. And let's check the spelling because I think I misspelled that penalty. And single, I misspelled it, uh, okay. All right, so that's the general outline uh, so we're running kind of long, so I'll stop it here. Next time we'll make it a little bit more fancy, adding some colors to it. Uh, but that's the, and then, and then of course, as we have more complexity in the return, we will add more schedules to the right that will feed into this uh, income tax formula.